Hey, James Kingsley here, and I wanted to start by going over, uh, well, this is for the Firebase tutorial on how to add Firebase to your courses to create uh, instant data connectivity between your learners or your courses or just so that you can store data uh, for later use. So <clears throat> I'm starting with the Captivate piece here, and I just wanted to show you in Captivate what variables I have and what functionality I have in the Captivate course, and then we'll look at how I handle that in the uh, JavaScript in there. So I mentioned variables. Let's take a look at that first. So I have uh, just a couple of variables that we're tracking in the Captivate one. Uh, one's called response one, and the other, cleverly, is called response two. And then I have the user count, and that's going to be the ongoing count of users that we're displaying. Close that. And we can see on the slide here where I'm displaying some of the information. So I have user count at the top. That's going to be our, uh, as I said, the running count of how many people are currently viewing this uh, course. In this course, either in the Captivate one or in the Storyline one, because it's the same application, if you will, as far as uh, we're concerned in, in Firebase. And then also, uh, we're going to display on either side uh, how many people said yes and how many people said no to this question here. Now, uh, I do have little buttons. They're just clear, uh, transparent buttons laid on top of the yes or no. And they're running some action script. I'm sorry. Wow, I just throw back to the old days action script. They're running JavaScript. <laughs> Uh, so when somebody clicks on the yes, it's awesome, I set awesome to true, set off to true. And when someone clicks on the no, and why would they do that, I set off to false. There. And we're going to take a look. Uh, rather than put all the JavaScript inside of Captivate, I just have them call those functions that I'm going to create later uh, after I publish my course there. Uh, so that's for the first slide. For the second slide, uh, I just wanted to show you while I'm in here how that one is set up. And again, we have the user count at the top. Uh, when I say user, that might be misleading. What I mean is how many windows is this open in? So you yourself are one user, but you could open 10 of them, and this uh, count would go to 10 because Firebase is keeping track of those connections. There are ways that we could limit that to show uh, just you know, a true count of people. But for this uh, demo, it's fine to, to have uh, basically uh, how many windows are open. So this slide is a drag and drop, and it's just a set up as a, a normal uh, Captivate drag and drop. And so we can see this is my uh, drag source, uh, et cetera. And these are my drop uh, targets down here along the bottom. I push the submit button off to the side because I'm auto submitting it when you let go of it there. Uh, so then no matter which one of these you drop it on, I'm running the same little piece of JavaScript and that's called check for color choice. So no matter which one of these you drop it on, we're going to run some JavaScript to figure out which one you dropped it on because uh, in Captivate, uh, I didn't see an easy way to trigger different JavaScript for each one of these items there. So I just took a shortcut since I'm uh, more comfortable in code a lot of days. Uh, I, I decided to do it over in the, in the JavaScript there. So that's the pretty much how the course is set up. Um, you can download it and, and play around in there and take a look at it. Now here is the, uh, the JavaScript that I did. So this is the index.html when the course is published. And when we come down to line 111, everything from there up, that's all pretty standard Captivate there. Um, then on one line 11, that's where I've started adding uh, code here. And again, when you download the files, you will have this uh, HTML file so you can take it apart and look at it. And I've tried to, to comment it uh, pretty well in there. So the first thing we're doing is we're reaching out and we're grabbing the uh, Firebase uh, JavaScript library. And then we create a couple of uh, variables here. So we have the course. We're going to use that 
to access the actual captivate player itself to get and set uh, our variables from there. And then we have um, using Firebase, we've set up some references to particular things we want to track. So, and for this part of it, we're going to track the awe, uh, the awesomeness, and we're going to track the presence. In, in other words, how many people are present on there. So we set those up. And then we push ourselves into the list. So we have a reference to uh, how many people are present in the Firebase application. And then we add ourselves to that. So every time this is launched, we just push another person in there. When you do that, Firebase creates a, a randomized like identifier for that uh, particular presence. And then we want to set it up so that when we leave, uh, we remove ourselves from that list. So this is uh, Firebase code, basically, if you will. It's JavaScript uh, that calls on their Firebase library. And it is very well documented on their website. They have great examples and stuff. But essentially what we're doing here is we're telling Firebase that uh, we do a couple of things uh, with the value of the presence list. So every time that presence list, every time the value of it changes, then we want to take a look at that value. And we're going to update uh, a couple of things on that. So we're going to add ourselves as online as true. And when we disconnect, our, our user reference, that's the reference to ourselves, our own window. When we disconnect it, we want to remove ourselves from the list of people that are present. Uh, and now here is where we're listening. So that was us pretty much setting information there. But here we are listening for information. So in this one, we're telling uh, Firebase that we want to listen to the value of that presence list. And every time somebody else is added to it, we want to update the course. And this is going to be a custom function that I wrote that I'll show you. So we'll update the course with, uh, we'll update the user count variable in the course with the number of children in the presence list. Again, num children, that's a uh, Firebase reference there. And it basically just says, count how many people are in the list and update that to the user's count. Now, this update course, I mentioned that that's a custom function I wrote. And that's just because I'm trying to normalize this code across the different uh, tools, the Latour, Storyline, Captivate, um, all those. So uh, all of them have a, a way for you to get and set uh, your custom variables inside of them. And all of them vary just a little bit in how they do that. So I can write this little bit of code here and tell it to update the course. And then all I need to do is rewrite this update course function for my Storyline or Captivate or the Lecture, et cetera. So in this case, for Captivate, we're using the CP uh, EI set value. And uh, this is documented on, on the Captivate website on how to do that. So basically, we're passing to that which variable we want to change and what the new value is. And then I just put that together here and update the course. Now, you might notice that I've wrapped it in a try catch. And that's basically just a JavaScript way of saying, hey, let's try this. And if it doesn't work, instead of crashing or erroring or anything, I want you to try this other thing. Okay. So uh, I did that in this case because with some of these tools, you, 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 you can be trying to set a variable before the player is ready for it, particularly like if the course has first started. So in this case, there's a good chance we're going to get that user count before the player, the course player, is ready for us to, to try to update anything in there. So what I've done here is I wrapped it in this try catch. I said, hey, try to update that, that value. Um, if you can't for some reason, then that means that we must not have our course player set yet. So try that again and then update the course again. And so we're going to try that every 500 milliseconds, which is a half a second. So basically we're saying if, if for some reason it didn't work the first time, wait a half a second, try it again there. Try to get the course player again and then uh, try to set it again. Then um, we had the function, that first slide where it was a yes, no, and we we're setting awe to true or false. 
So in this case, what we're doing is we're saying, um, if it was true, then we want to set all the uh, yes. And if it was false, we're going to set the no, no. And we have our reference to the awe in Firebase, to the awe object, you could say, in Firebase. And what we're saying is grab that object, set the child object, in this case, let's say it was true, set the child object called yes. We're going to run a transaction on that. We're going to get the current count of it and add one to it. So it's going to basically reach out. It's going to ask Firebase, how many people have already said yes? Firebase is going to say 2,553. It's going to say great, and it's going to add one to that, and then update Firebase with that, with that new data. There is a, a little bit of a change in here, a little bit of a variation to that, to say basically, hey, if no one has ever said yes, yes, Obviously, we can't add one to nothing right? because the default isn't zero. The default is it doesn't exist. So if the current data value of yes just doesn't exist, then we want to just set it to one, basically, because you're the first person to vote for that. And similarly, um, this is us setting the aw. We have a refer another reference to the aw object here where we're saying, and this probably looks familiar from some of the other ones, that whenever we're, uh, whenever the value of that changes, we want to update the course. So Firebase is going to be monitoring in the background so that when somebody says yes in one window, Firebase is automatically going to send a message to our window. It's going to trigger this bit of code right in here, which is then going to update our course. And so in the course, we named those two variables response one and response two. And so what I'm saying is whatever comes back from Firebase uh, to the value of yes, set that to response one. And whatever comes back to the value of no, set that to response two. So we know from down here where we're setting these to, you know, 253 or one or whatever, we know that's going to be the similar value that's coming from other uh, windows or players uh, or learners. And we're going to use that to update, captivate there. Then um, the other bit of code we had in there was the check for color choice. And this one uh, got kind of complicated because, like I said, there's I didn't see a way in Captivate to determine via Captivate which color the person picked that they dropped that on. So I ended up writing some, some JavaScript where basically I, I check all the possible colors that they could have picked, and I run this uh, jQuery solution here that basically checks to see if two objects are overlapping each other. And if the palette is overlapping the red, then it's going to return true. If it's not, then it's going to return false. So we, we loop through all the different possible color combinations, and then we uh, set um, our user reference color to whatever was picked. So again, all this first part here is just me looping through trying to figure out what color that you picked. Once I have that, then I'm going to tell Firebase, hey, this particular user, let's set their new color to be blue or green or whatever. Now in this case, for the Captivate side of it, we don't need to display any information based on that because we're going to handle that over on the storyline side and that's where we're going to control the, the sliders and stuff there. So that's a quick walkthrough of how the JavaScript and the Captivate file are set up. If you're curious about the storyline one, hop back over to the blog post on elinebrothers.com and uh, click on the storyline one and I'll walk you through that one. And don't forget all these files are available to download off of the the blog post as well. Thanks.